Fans of sci-fi wargaming, large resin models, and nouveau retro designs, thank you very much for joining me for a sample review, and I suppose an out-of-the-pack review. And I've got something very different and unusual to show you today, which is in this box that's come all the way from Kentucky, I think, in the USA. If you've watched my channel for any amount of time, you'll know that I'm quite fond of sci-fi model designs dating back to the late 80s, early 90s, and that certain retro theme. And I've featured a number of miniatures where people have gone back to old discarded designs and brought them to life as new miniatures. So, for example, the models I showed you from Nightmare. Here we've got something from a new company called Battle Castings, and this is run by a chap called John Lander, and he's very kindly sent me a sample of his first model to review. Going to be an interesting one, this, I think. So, before we start, as I said, John has sent me this as a review copy. As usual, I will review this and I will tell you what I think of it. Where I see good stuff, I'll praise it, and if I find bad stuff, I'll point that out as well. But please bear that in mind when assessing the opinions I offer in this video. Without further ado, we shall get the scalpel of opening and delve into this box. I've had this box for over a week now, but I've been saving it for the video to open for all you guys and girls live. But it's been burning a hole in my mental wargaming pocket to open it and have a look. Okay then, so let's have a look. Aha! Oh, very nice. Let's just get some bits out of the way. Uh, nicely packaged there. Always good to see, particularly when you're doing a crossing from the US of A. The model that we've got to look at today is the Cutlass Class War Strider, which is a 28mm scale resin model kit. As I said, this is from John's new company, Battle Castings, and here is his design. Now, for those of you who remember sci-fi wargaming of the late 80s and early 90s, particularly at a micro scale, you might remember something that inspired the creation of this uh, war strider. Now, this is 28 millimeter. Why don't I say that? It said it somewhere, didn't it? 28 millimeter there. And we've got a scale one and a quarter inches there. So you've got a rough idea of the size of this model. This is a hefty unit. Let's open it up. There we go. From the Forges of Terror. Ancient Greek. All right, so we have, right, what do we have? We have some instructions here. Uh, we have a business card, Retro Gothic Sci-Fi Resin Models Battle Castings. And there's a bit of bump and his social medias. I'll leave some links to John's social medias in the comments. And the, uh, apparently you know, it's just figure painting. He's on Instagram, that's how I uh, first met John. So we've got some instructions here. Seems like I've got a bit of story. So I'm gonna have to have a quick read of this. So first thing, uh, Experience models age 14 and plus. Yeah, and we get weapon options as well. So it has five head and six weapon options. This is interesting, okay. There's a bit of discussion here about how to assemble the model. And then we've got some contact details for John, Heath and Zach and Tony, who I guess are all the people. Uh, resin model using non-VOC. VOC is volatile organic compounds, if you, if you don't know. So those hydrocarbon solvents. So non-toxic resin supplied unassembled, unpaved, and then glued. Da, 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 the usual. And then what we have is, it's a bit hard to see. There you go, that's better. An exploded diagram of the Cutlass Class War Strider. I think that's enough of me talking. Let's start getting some bits out to have a look. Right, let's uh, move things to a side and try and minimize shadows. And then we'll lay that there and we'll see if we can uh, lay out the parts to match it. So we've got a big tray of bits. There are a lot of parts to this kit. Well, there's quite a few parts, but I think most of this is on account of the weapon options. Let's make a start. And because we all have rotary cannons, we've got this fella here. So that is a four barreled rotary cannon. What does this look like? Hmm, this is interesting. 
Certainly not Pongy. If anyone remembers the review I did of the armor cast Shadow Sword Bane Blade, <laughs> that was a kit that was in a similar sort of style to this, and that was smelly. But this is completely odorless. So there's definitely some cleanup to do around here. And the filling there, we've got a bit of a bubble. Cool design for sure. We've got some ammo feeds. Definitely um, got some bit of cleaning up to do around here with the surface being a little rough. Now, looking here, there's some striations, which I presume are from the 3D Print Master. So there might be a bit of work, depending how dedicated you are on something like this. And bear in mind, this is sort of a, a bit more like a garage kit. You may want to sand those away and to give a, you know, striations always show up curved surfaces, don't they? Cool design there. Then we've got this. So this is a sword with a motivated chain actuator blade, we could say. Looking at it, I mean, everything's lined up so far. Definitely quite a bit of cleanup though to do around where the molds have met. Well, not the mold lines, but the, the mold joining point. They're, they're not slipped, but there's definitely been a bit of seepage. And seepage, when it's lined up, is in effect what they call flash in resin casting. And you can actually see the flash here. But yeah, it's nice and um, nice and clean. There's uh, nothing slimy to it. So, got those two. What's next? We've got a... A servo actuated giant battle hand. Hmm, pretty cool. Obviously, there's no posability here with the actual hand. You know, all these fingers are molded on. Flip side to that is it's simpler to build. I imagine you may be able to get a bit of posability in at the shoulder joint. It's an air bubble there, there, there. There's a need filling with putty. Oh, quite a big one there on the knuckle, on the thumb knuckle. That's quite a, quite hefty, that one. Still, it will fill. Milliput is the best thing for dealing with cavities like that. All right, what's next? We have this, which is, what might that be? That might be a, thermal beam projector or perhaps a heavy microwave laser cannon people who collected stuff back in the late 80s early 90s will probably know the inspiration for this design <laughs> and i really like the design cues that's been brought through here now i have another cannon so a couple of issues with this part so firstly, like I pointed out on the rotary cannon, we've got the striations that appear to... I don't know. I'm saying they're from 3D printing, but I'm now thinking they might not be because if you look at these, you can see that they are radially symmetrical, i.e. the spokes are radiating out from a center point here. So I actually think that's a feature of the 3D design as opposed to an issue or an artifact of printing. One thing that we have got here, though, we've got a pretty hefty mold slip down at the front end of that barrel, and that is quite pronounced. I think, for me, if I'd bought this kit, I'd want that part replacing. By the time you've reprofiled this barrel and this section here, and done the same underside, you may well be losing some of the actual detail. So, yeah, I think I'd probably ask for that one replacing. But good design, though. Once we get to the torso, we'll see how some of these fit into the shoulders. So we've got three cannons there, and then we've got something for the carapace, which is a cluster missile launcher. Not bad. Got these same sort of the radial artifacts or features, out, shall I say. It might be that the 3D model could do with more polygons. That's the word I was looking for to, uh, to get rid of that. So I've got that. I've got a bag of little bits. I'm just going to unload this bit by bit as we work down the box. 
So I have a ornamental spire, which is going to, you can see on the instructions, that is going to go atop the armored body. We've got some ammo feeds, which I think go with the rotary cannon. I don't know where they're going to attach. I'd have to read the instructions again. Maybe they're supposed to hang down, I don't know. Those are quite rough, those. <laughs> There's a, definitely quite a bit of cleanup work to do there. Air bubbles, quite a few to fill. So yeah, I mean, it will clean up, but there's a fair amount of work to do there to get it to that stage. What's that one? Hmm. Oh, I see. So that's like a carapace spike in, if you don't want the spire. And then finally, we've got this bit here, which feels like it's cast out of the, yeah, maybe it's the same material. It feels, it feels a bit finer than the others, but I think it is actually the same. Can I actually see that? Ah, there you go. So that is there on the instructions. This is like a secondary weapon that's mounted in the walker's chest. So we'll pop that there. Right, digging deeper into the box. Right, I've got some bigger components now. Right, here we have the, the main body. That's a big hunk of resin if there ever was one. I mean, that's nicely cast. A little bit of cleanup. Some casting gates removed. So they've taken off the casting gates on these, so that'll reduce the weight for shipping. Good size hub there for the lower torso. So that's probably going to go into there. So it comes off. So if you want to magnetize it, you've got a great place to magnetize it there. Bit of cleanup. Overall, that's not bad. Again, some evidence of what I believe now are the polygon features from the 3D model. So I'm presuming this has been CAD designed. Well, I know it has, I know it has been CAD designed. Then we've got the waist and the hips. Got a cog device with a skull, some sort of bionic eye in it. Perhaps it's a faction badge or perhaps it's denoting the worship of some esoteric cult. Quite a lot of cleanup to do around here. I mean, everything's lined up. Just a lot of um, gunk and stuff to take away around that. What's next? Let's continue with the big bits and do the legs and work our way down the body. So we've got two upper legs. Interesting. Oh, I see. So they're going to fit like that on the hip. So for the legs, while I said there's not a lot of posability in the arms, for the legs, if I grab a lower leg, I've got a ball and socket joint on both the hip and the knee. So at this stage of the model, you've got loads of posability. That's quite neat, that is. So on both of these, there's a bit of a mold slip. Given how smooth this part is, it will clean up, but obviously it needs doing. Otherwise, okay. I do like the design for articulation there. Very simple approach to give a lot of posability. Right, let's do the lower legs. A couple more hefty bits of resin here. So there seems to the those radial features I talked about seems to have been some smoothing off of these. So there, maybe there's some preparatory work's been done to sand those down. Should put me on retainer. I'll get these as smooth as glass. <laughs> Bits of um, mold seams to clean away and the gates to clean off. Overall, pretty neat. Oh, whoops. Right, gonna have to shuffle him up or her. There we go. Right, what else we got? We got shoulder blocks. Two of these, nice and hefty. So we have got a rotating socket joint for the main weapons like that. And there you've got these diamond or square joints. I wonder actually if we just get the knife of opening to take a little bit of the casting gate off. Yeah, that'll fit like that. I wonder, um, 
why they chose to use a square connecting peg there when perhaps they could have used a round one and you could have added some more posability into the arms. Not sure on that. Answer them in the comments, please. Right, let's spread out a little bit more. So onto the final few parts. So firstly, two feet. Again, we've got ball and socket joints. The ankle. Ah, put the feet the wrong way around. Yeah, there's a bit of motion in that. Coupled with the knee and the hips, that should allow you to get a decent pose, get some life into the model. And finally, we have a bag of heads. <laughs> These are very cool, aren't they? Lots of, lots of um, Techno medieval designs. I think that's probably how I'll describe these. Techno medieval armored warrior designs. Techno nobles. Perhaps that could be a techno baron. Has a certain uh, malevolent air to it. That one. I like that one. And that perhaps is a yeah stylized on a skull. Yeah, they're all very nice. Bits of cleanup to do. That's a bit cabling is a bit scratchy there in terms of the finish on the molding. Probably not going to be that visible, but uh, if you're wanting it, bob on, there's a bit of clean up to do there. But design wise, I really like those. This one in particular, I think it's ace. Right, let's lay those out. That's everything. Uh, nothing else in the box, no. So there you go, the Cutlass Class Wall Strider from Battle Castings. So this is his first model. What do I think of it? So let's do the pros. Well, the pros is you get, it's an impressive big model and it comes with a lot of options for the price. I mean, even at the price, this is being marked at 80 US dollars. And for that, not only do you get the walker itself, but you get three options for its range weapon and two options for its melee weapon as well, or its close combat weapon, if you will. And on top of that, we've got three choices on the top mount, and then we've got five different heads. So for this size of model, I think that's a lot of options. And, you know, that strikes me as being good value. So that's good. I like the design of the legs and the feet because I think that's gonna allow you to pose it well on the waist as well, that's all good. The heads are also ball joints, so that allow you to put a bit of motion into the head as well. The design's cool. You can't buy anything like this on the market at the moment. And if you like these sort of retro inspired models, in a bit like in the style of say, armor casts old detail, this offers something really new and interesting. Not so good points. So I think it's a bit odd on the shoulders that they went for a square peg joint, because I'd like to have been able to pose those a bit. A round peg would have made more sense in my mind. Even if, you know, they thought, oh, well, it should. You know, this is supposed to be a single bit. I think having that being able to move makes sense. In terms of the casting quality, it's generally actually pretty good. There is cleanup to do. There are some air bubbles, but there's nothing critical on the air bubbles. There's no detail that's been obliterated by one, so you don't have to rebuild any detail. The cannon, that's a bad mold slip, that one. You know, I would ask for that to be replaced. You know, that's the sort of thing that quality control should be catching and removing. The other thing I'd say in terms of a general design, you, and something to consider if you were to buy this mold, you have got this sort of, these radial surface features. They're not, from a 3D printer, which is what I originally thought. Those are artifacts of the, the CAD design, the 3D designs, and they are visible to a greater and lesser degree across the model. So that's something you need to have a think about if you were going to buy this, because depending how you painted it, those could show up quite prominently. So something to think about there.
To finish on a plus to that negative, another thing to consider is this is a relatively simple kit to put together. You've only got a few bits. You could actually build this without pinning it because all the contact surfaces are so big and hefty. You could just stick it together, and particularly if you used epoxy adhesives. Some people find some resin kits very complicated and daunting to tackle. There is a certain attractive simplicity to this one that means building it is much more accessible than some of the more complex resin kits on the market. So that's something to consider as well. So those are all my thoughts on the Cutlass Class War Strider from Battle Castings. I'd just like to say thank you again to John Lander for sending this to me for review. And I'd also like to hear what you all think of this as well. What do you think of the look of the model, the idea behind it? And I suppose your thoughts just around these retro themed models that pay homage to artistic concepts of long ago. As always, I'll be very interested to hear those thoughts in the comment section. But other than that, I'd just like to say thank you very much for watching. I'll speak to you next time, and goodbye.